Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll be working through an example of three-dimensional motion in a gravitational field. Uh, so not many things change when we move to three dimensions um, in the presence of a gravitational field. Uh, we still have F equals MA, right? The sum of the forces should be mass times acceleration. So in three dimensions, that looks like this, right? M times the second derivative of X second derivative of y, second derivative of z. So think of this as like my up and down, my, um, my altitude, uh, and then we can think of x and y as um, uh, northeast, south, and west. So we'll have to decide on our axes for these. Uh, but we can do this so if we just have gravity acting on the object, if it's just the constant gravitational field, then our acceleration will just look like this. And we can go through all the same sort of derivations that we did in the past for two-dimensional motion, uh, right? So if we don't have a y component, say, then just x and z together will look like um, what we have derived, what we had derived uh, previously. But now this offers the possibility of both x and y motion, so uh, not just uh, horizontally, but uh, another dimension to our horizontal motion. This also op opens the possibility of having other forces, uh, like crosswind spins or slices, that might be accelerating my object uh, in one of the two horizontal um, directions. So the example we're going to work through is this one. So we have a small projectile fired to the east over horizontal ground. Uh, so that's a nice assumption. We have an initial speed. We have an angle above the horizontal. And additionally, we have a crosswind blowing from south to north, north, producing acceleration of the projectile of 0.36 meters per second squared to the north. All right, and we'd like to know a couple things here. We'd like to know where the projectile lands, how far did it go from the launch site. And then once we figure that out, we'd like to correct this crosswind. So let's say we want, maybe we're golfing something like that, and we want to go directly east. Where, uh, how do we change our launch? So at what angle from due east uh, must we launch the projectile uh, in order for it to land exactly due east? Because again, we have this crosswind uh, from south to north that'll be pushing it in the northern, uh, nor northward direction. So, all right, I'm gonna start this by just drawing a picture of the situation and defining my axes. So here I have my typical three-dimensional axes laid out, uh, x, y, and z. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let this be north, and then this will be east. I mean, this is south and west. So positive y direction is northerly, positive x is easterly, and then the opposites of that. And then my z, again, is my uh, altitude above the ground, the horizontal, or the uh, flat ground. So what is my, uh, what is my, pro what does my uh, projectile look like? What is the trajectory of this thing? So we take off where we are. Let's read the problem again. Let's jump to the problem again. It's fired to the east over horizontal ground with an initial speed of 300 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. So that's fired to the east. So due east, we're firing this object at 30 degrees above the horizontal at 300 meters per second. So it looks like we're gonna be heading due east like this, coming towards us. Coming towards us, due east is how we're starting off at 30 degrees. And then we have this crosswind of 0.36 meters per second squared to the north. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna force this to meander to the north a little bit. So when I land, I should have traveled just a bit to the north because of this uh, northerly crosswind. So that's the idea is where we've launched it and we'll end up about right there. So we'd like to figure out, yeah, how far did we travel? So that'll be this distance, right? From this point back to the origin, that'll be how far uh, the object has traveled from the launch site. Um, we also wanna know where it lands. So for that, I can give uh, X and Y components of this vector, 
right? So we have this vector when it lands. We can think of this, this like a vector. That should be along the horizontal because that's where the ground is. That's where it'll land. Uh, this will be pointing, it looks like, positive y component, positive x component. So that's what we should be looking for. Uh, and so we really just need to find this vector. Um, its x and y components will be where it lands on the ground. Its magnitude will be how far it land, landed from the launch site. So let's go ahead and work out those first. So we'll start with, this is always sort of the place to start with this, especially when we have other forces going on or other accelerations, uh, our acceleration vector. So A of t, so x component, am I accelerating it all in the x direction? Uh, no, there's no, there's no acceleration. The x, we're just starting with an initial velocity in the x direction. So my acceleration in the x direction is zero. However, we do have an acceleration in the y direction, right? It's 0.36 meters per second squared to the north, so, that, so that's positive y. So this is 0.36 meters per second squared. And then do we have a z acceleration? Yes, of course, we have gravity acting downward. So this is a minus, right, negative z. Uh, minus g. And so g here, we're using meters per second squared uh, for acceleration for the other component, so we should use uh, minus 9.8 meters per second squared there as well for g. Great, so there's my acceleration vector. My velocity vector will be an antiderivative of that, keeping in mind my initial velocity. So maybe let's figure out what's my initial velocity here. Uh, maybe I'll do that down here. What's my initial velocity? Or now I'll phrase it like a function v of zero. What's my initial velocity? V of zero should be so x direction. Um, I, I I'm launched directly to the east, 300 meters per second, um, at an alpha of 30 degrees. So that um, should be 300 cosine of 30 degrees. Do I have any initial y velocity? Uh, no, all the y velocity is gonna come from this crosswind, but I start out with zero. And then my z component, I should have 300 sine of alpha or 30 degrees. <clears throat> I want to go ahead and uh, actually get exact values for that. So cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. So this is going to be... Oh, running out of a little room there. So this is going to be 300 times square root of 3 over 2. So that's 150 times square root of 3. Zero there. And then sine of 30 is a half. So this will just be 150 there. So this is my initial velocity. So that's going to help me when I take an antiderivative of this. These will be my constants. So what I'll get is 150, right? Integrate this, I'll still get 0 plus this constant, 150 square root of 3. Uh, here, integrating this, I'll get 0.36t plus 0. So this is just 0.36t. And then here, I'll get minus 9.8t plus my 150 for velocity. So that's taking account antiderivative of this together with my initial conditions. All right, let's go ahead and grab position. So we are starting at the origin. So my R of zero is just zero, zero, zero. So we've made that part nice. We're starting at the origin. So that means I just need to integrate this and let my constant vector be zero here. So this is 150 square root of 3t. I have 0.18t squared, right, one half of this. And then I have one half of the ni uh, negative 9.8, so that's minus 4.9t squared plus 150t. Cool, so I have position, I have velocity, I should be able to start to work this out. So we're gonna do this just like we did uh, these previous examples with uh, time and flight, max height and range, right? In order to get this range, I need to know when it hits the ground. Uh, so that's sort of my first question is when does it hit the ground? Right, that's the same as my time in flight, which I'll use capital T for. 
So it hits the ground uh, precisely when z of t is zero. So I know that to answer this question, we want to know when is z of t equal to zero. I'll use capital T for my time in flight. So z is this one. So we set this up. We get negative 4.9 squared plus 150t equal to zero. This gives me t equals zero. And uh, let's see, when I factor a t out, I'll have negative 4.9t plus 150. Uh, so maybe I'll just write this down. And uh, we have negative 4.9t plus 150 equals zero. I should say four here, actually. And so this solution gives me 150 over 4.9. Let me go ahead and plug that into my calculator. If you don't have your calculator on, you go grab it, work through these with me. And so what do I get here? I get 30, about t equal 30.61 seconds. I'll just round to two decimal places. So my time in flight is 30.61 seconds. So with that, that's how, long, how much time it takes to get here. So now I can get a hold of my x component and y component of position at that time, and that'll be this vector here. So this vector here uh, really is R of capital T, right? It's the position, this position vector at this time. So I need to plug in 30.61 for each of these. Let's go ahead and figure that out. Let's do it uh, over here. So R of T or R of 30.61 seconds is, right, so that's 150 square root of 3 times this 30.61. Uh, yeah, I don't want to write all that down. I'm just going to calculate it. So 150 square root of 3 times 30.61. 30.61, careful with your parentheses. Again, this is why you should be working through this with me. This is 7,952.71. We're rounding to two decimal places here. Made that choice earlier, so I might as well keep to it. Um, and then let's do 30.61 squared times my 0.18. So 168. 0.65, rounded. And finally, what's the z component of this? It should be zero, right? If I plug this in, I should get zero for z. That's how we found this t value in the first place. Excuse me. That's how we found this t value in the first place, so we should get zero here. That is a good check that you can do to make sure you got the right t. Plug this 30.61 in, and it should come out to zero. If it doesn't, go back and recalculate what t should be. So I'm pretty confident in my t, so I'm going to move on. Here is my, uh, my vector. So now this describes exactly where it is when it lands, which is what, uh, what we wanted. Let's see, how is it phrased again? Where does the projectile land? How far does it land from its uh, launch site? So where does it land? It lands, so we can say it lands um, 7,952.71, we're in meters to the east, right? This was in the east direction, and 168.65 meters to the north. If you need to, jump back to the picture we drew at the beginning to remind ourselves of how this thing is looking, right? We went to the east and to the north a little bit. X was my east component. Uh, y was my northerly component. And so that means where did it land from the launch site? Well, that's my magnitude of R of T. And so that's what square root of X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. How far did we land? So let's calculate that. 7,952.7 squared plus 168.65 squared. Take a square root of that. And we should get, I got 7,954.49 meters. 
So uh, it traveled, or I'll say it lands 7,954.49 meters from the launch site. I'm going to go ahead and calculate that again because it seems really close to just that value. So let me try that one more time, 7,952 squared. All right, I've done it twice and I get the same thing, so I'm pretty confident in my answer there. Cool. So we have, yeah, where it lands and how far it landed from the launch site. Pretty cool. So the second part of this is going to require a little bit of ingenuity. In order to correct for the crosswind, so if we want this projectile to land due east of the launch site. So we want to get rid of that uh, Y component of it. At what angle from due east must the projectile be fired? So for this one, let me start a new set of axes down here. Whoops. So what's going on here? always a good idea to draw the situation, draw what's going on. This helps inform you about where to start. If you have no idea where to start, start by just drawing it. Drawing does not have to be perfect, but you need to get as much information into the drawing as you can. Having a ruler does help. Again, so this is my y-axis, and this is my northerly direction. Here's east, which is my x-axis. And then we have my z, my z-axis, and I'll be up and down. Soggy wheat. Never eat soggy wheat. That's how I always remember my, uh, my direction, the northeast, south, and west. So we want to now, we want to launch it at some angle from due east. So before when we launched straight east, it ended up a little bit to the north. So I want to launch it at some angle compared to due east. So I'll try and mark that there. So some angle, let's call it theta. We're going to launch it along that trajectory. We still have our alpha, right? Alpha is this angle from the horizontal. So that's off the ground is my alpha. And I'm launching it like that. Remember, we have this acceleration in the northerly direction, which is going to push it a bit to the north. And I want it to land exactly due east. So I like to imagine this as a, a golfer doing this wants to end up exactly due east along the golf course. Um, and they know they have this crosswind here. And we're assuming they hit it, you know, exactly straight. Um, that They're a, quite a good golfer. Um, so we want to know what this angle theta is that we need in order to have it end up uh, due east. So what this means is we're going to have to break down uh, our horizontal velocity. So if we jump back, actually, I mean, I, I, we don't need to do that. There's other ways to solve this. I do implore you to try and think of your own way to solve this. There's actually quite a quick sort of very clever way to solve this to come up with this angle theta based on the geometry of what we have here. So you might uh, you might think about that before, if you want, pause it and try and come up with an answer. Uh, but I'm going to do it, uh, I'm going to do it my own way because it, it, it involves us breaking down the horizontal component, which is going to be a useful skill. So I'd like to do it my way and then I'll show you uh, at the end of this uh, a more intuitive or uh, more clever way to solve this quicker way. So, yeah, so what do I mean by this idea of breaking down the horizontal component? So notice here, my initial velocity just came from this cosine of the alpha, right? My 30 degrees above the horizontal was 300 cosine 30. And that's because my velocity was just entirely due east and up. But now, 
when I break this down, some of my velocity, because I'm going in an angle uh, of due east, some of my velocity is going to be in the x direction and some is going to be in the y direction. So this 300 cosine 30 is actually going to get broken down further into an x component and a y component. So let's try that first. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to a two-dimensional viewpoint of just, I just want to look at north and east. So here's, I'm not going to bother with the the ruler here. Uh, so this will be my x, so this is to the east, and then north here will be my y component. So I have this angle, theta, and I know along this angle theta, right, so I'm launching, I'm launching it, uh, that the magnitude of this vector just in the, so let's, we're going to call this Yeah, what do we want to call this? So this is the horizontal component of my initial velocity. So I'm thinking of this as like uh, my velocity just in the x and y. Oh, what do I want to call it? I don't want to call it v naught because that also involves the z component. I just want the horizontal. At any rate, okay, let's just say the magnitude of this vector, this is my 300 cosine of uh, alpha or cosine of 30 degrees. That's the magnitude of this vector. Right, and that comes from when I break down from the launch angle, right? My alpha, cosine of alpha will be along this vector, and then sine alpha will be my z. So there's cosine alpha, and then I want to break that down into x and y. So that means, so this is 300 cosine, this was the 150 square root of 3, right? And so now I need to break that down into x and y directions, and that depends on my theta. So the x direction, this is going to be 300, uh, or 150 squared of 3 cosine of theta. So that's this bit here. 150 square root of 3 times cosine of theta. And then here, this will be uh, minus, right, because it's going to be to the south, minus 150 um, square root of 3 times sine of theta. So this is going to be my initial velocity. So what my, yeah, what's my initial velocity then? B of 0 is going to look like in the x direction, I have 150 square root of 3 cosine theta. Remember, I don't know what theta is. The theta is to compensate for this crosswind. So that's really what I'm going to be solving for, is I need to get a hold of what theta is. So right now I just need to keep it uh, as, as, as theta, this variable. 150 square root of 3 in the x direction. In the y direction, we have minus 150 square root of 3 sine theta. And then in the z direction, we have the... Uh, just 150, right? Remember, this 150 was 300 sine of my alpha, 30 degrees. So there's my initial velocity. So what's my velocity equation? So this will be, uh, there's, there was no acceleration in the x direction, right? Remember that, 150 squared root of 3 cosine theta will be stay there. There is an acceleration in the y direction. Remember, this is to the north, so that's a positive y value of, that was the 0 0.36 uh, meters per second squared. So this is going to be 0 0.36 T minus 150 square root of 3 sine theta. And then the z, that's my minus uh, 9.8 uh, T plus 150. Right, so that means my r, let's find position vector, r of t is 150 square root of 3 cosine theta times t. Uh, we're still at a, we're still starting at the origin. Here I'm going to have the 0.18 t squared 
150 square root of 3 sine theta p. And then here's the minus 4.9 t squared plus 150 p. So our next step in this, yeah, think about what's, what's my next step. Remember, my goal is to get a hold of this theta. And the idea is I want to choose theta so that my y value, my y component is zero when the object lands. So when does the object land? Remember, that's when my z of t is equal to zero. Notice my z is exactly the same as before. And so my t, my time in flight t, is exactly the same as it was uh, in the previous iteration of this. It's 30.61 seconds. I haven't altered that at all because the uh, acceleration in the z direction and the initial z velocity is exactly the same as before. So we get this many seconds. And so that means that uh, y of t, so let's figure out what's my y, my y component at 30.61. Let's go ahead and plug that in and work it out. So 30... 0.61 squared times 0.18 uh, and then minus 150 square root of 3. Uh, no, wait, uh, back up, back up me. Because we have this variable hanging out. I can't just calculate the whole thing. I don't know what that is. Uh, well, so this turned out to be 0.18 t squared, that was 168.65, I'm going to round to two decimals again, minus a so 150 square root of 3 times my 30.61. So 150 square root of 3 times 30.61. That gives me 7,952.71. Times sine of theta. And I want this to equal zero. So I'm going to set it equal to zero and solve for sine of alpha. So what this tells me is sine of, or sorry, sine of theta. So I, I have 168.65 divided by that last quantity. I get 0.0212. So let's see. So what is theta then? Inverse sine of that. And then make sure to check whether you are in degrees or radians. I'm in degrees, so my answer should come out in degrees. O two one two. So I get 1.21, uh, let's say 5 degrees. And so if I choose my theta to be this, then y of t will be exactly 0, and I'll have my solution. Remember what the goal here was. We wanted to correct for the crosswind. We wanted the projectile to land due east of the launch site. At what angle from due east must the projectile be launched? Um, so we have our angle, and then let's remember how we defined this angle. This was south of east, right? This is to the, to the south sum. So our answer is the projectile should be launched. Should be launched. Right, to correct for the crosswind, projectile should be launched at... 1.215 degrees south of due east. And there's the answer to our question. And now that we have what the theta is, we can work out what the x value is uh, at this point um, and get some more information. So how could I have gotten this easier? Maybe you came up with it, maybe not. Maybe you just follow along with me. Again, I invite you to pause it and think how could we have gotten this answer a different way? Well, we'll go back to this idea of my, the first thing we did. We have this angle here, right? We can find the angle of how far north of east did, uh, did the object end up. So that is, I want to look at my, my R of T, this guy. 
So maybe let me do axes. This will be my east direction. This will be north direction and y. Um, and so, right, so this projectile ended up over here, north of east. And what were the components of this? It's this by this. So 7,952.71 and 168.65. And let's just see what this angle is. What is the angle of where it ended up north of east? So that's, uh, well, tangent, so I'll call this theta. So tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent is 168.65 over my 7,952.71. Let's go ahead and work that out. So inverse tangent, 168.65 divided by 7,952.71. What do you know? This gives me an angle of theta equal 1.215 uh, about. What did I get over here? Theta equal 1.215. So the idea is, because there's no other accelerations or anything going on, that if I just rotate my axes, if I sort of just rotate everything by this theta, then I'll end up due east of north. And so in order to compensate for this, I just need to adjust my theta. I need to now have theta go down here, and then my object will curve around and land back in the x direction. So this was a much quicker way to end up with the same uh, answer. It also gives a way to check our answer and um, and confirm that this way of thinking is correct, right? Um, so two equally valid ways of doing it, and one of these was, well, a lot more work than the other, but hopefully illuminating of working through this, so breaking down that, that vector into the components uh, and then going with that. Okay, that's it for this video. I know it was a long one. Um, not much else uh, in this section, uh, but I'll certainly see you in a later video. Bye now.